Hey everybody, welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, by popular demand, I have a good one for you today because Bob Kudla is back to set us straight on the stock market. And uh, I gave him like 20 different titles of what I wanted to name this video already. And he's already schooled me before we even sat down. So um, it is great to have you back. Oh, thanks, Dan. And I, I want to give you an attaboy right away because last time we met last month, and uh, it was the S&P down 7% since is. you uh, uh, talked last time. Okay, and you called that too. So um, pay attention, guys, because he's always been right. And, you know, it's regardless of where things are at um, uh, in the market, there's always ways to make money in the market. You've taught me that. But uh, you also want to school me on something, and I'll take the heat for it. Oh, yeah. So, um, so when Dan um, came in, he said, he goes, Bob, I'm really pissed the market should have sold off during the war news. And then uh, what I told him is that that's, that's not how it works. So since World War II, uh, every, uh, every breakout in conflict, regardless of what it is, uh, causes an initial positive reaction in the markets. And Monday morning, we had a, maybe a 45 minutes of selling. And then we've been up since then. And uh, I know our video is coming out Thursday here. And so uh, we expect good positive vibes for the market till Friday the 13th. Mm. And then I think we're gonna go back into a, a sell mode here till the end of the month. And then from there, uh, depending on, you know, as I told Dan is that we're mostly spectators in wars in the United States. So people use it as a liquidity opportunity. But uh, if the war does come home to us and we do get, uh, a fifth column in the United States that could change things, or if there's a, you know, some sort of catastrophic event that uh, would would threaten the uh, continuation of of you know economic activity, then then we could get a sell off. So, but in the meantime, right now, everybody seems to think that um, the positioning is that it's going to be limited to Hamas, Hezbollah might get involved. If Hezbollah gets involved, then we get involved, and then we can revisit if it's going to stay up or not. But always initial, there's an old phrase saying, uh, you know, you, you, you buy the war drums, you sell the trumpets. So, uh, so, you know, the drums were beaten here, and then the trumpets call in the end of battle, uh, then it goes down again. And, and you've been right every time. So, um, okay, well, let's talk about, like, the Fed. Do you, you know, the Fed minutes come out, um, and, uh, you know, hey, you know, they're, uh, all the Fed presidents are begging them to, to uh, not raise rates. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, the Fed's done. So uh, we see, um, um, so we, ha we have information that we can see that's uh, like, it's behind the scenes. It's not hidden data. You have to pay for it. But uh, we can see that there's been hidden buying for the last, uh, you know, 30 days in the bond market. And so uh, we called this two weeks ago. We told people TLT is probably a good buy, which is the long bond ETF. It's up 5% uh, so far. And uh, we think it's going to push up maybe another 5%. It may pause. But when the Fed has paused already once and, um, and we had to see PPI news came out, market didn't react to it being more more um, Half a percent? Aggressive. That was crazy. Yeah, they didn't care. So that tells you everything. It's already priced in. And, and everybody's looking past that. Janet Yellen and the Federal Reserve are going to liquefy these markets for this uh, um, this war and this recession. And uh, we're, we're done with rates. When you say rates. liquefy, they're going to pour money into it. That's yeah. what they're going to do. And yeah. they're going to, this is, okay, um, this, is, this is insanity right now. People, you know, um, my last video, people sent me all these stories about how just miserable they are with inflation, how unhappy they are, how they're not going to have a normal Thanksgiving, they're not going to have a normal holiday season because of this, and uh, inflation has been a killer. And then the National Association of Home Builders, they get together and they're saying, hey, you can't raise interest rates, you've got to lower interest rates because it's killing our industry, and uh, the average $300,000 loan is up $246. Like, who, who, who's got a $300,000 mortgage right now for a new house? Yeah. That, that, that's insane. That's insanity. So, um, you know. Yeah, the thing is, people have to separate the stock market from the economy. So all the stock market cares about is that, um, can I make more money being in bonds, in cash, or in the stock market? And so you have a situation now where uh, you can make more money being in bonds 
So they are, they're gonna start moving into bonds. It brings yields down. When yields fall, then people say, well, I gotta put my money now into stocks. And so that's how the yin and yang works. As long as the Fed keeps liquefying, that means the money supply is increasing. You gotta remember, the, our government is raising the money supply 5% a year. Now, it doesn't mean that 99% of Americans won't be hurt. The 1% that owns all the assets are sitting there saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Things are awesome. It's just that it's just that I'm in the stock market, so all I care about in that sense is that can I outrun inflation? And that's my goal, and that's what I share with our subscribers. Okay. Housing. Housing in general, okay? Um, you know, we talked about, you know, 09 to 015, you know, how the market went down, it was soft, it was gooey during that time. I used a word that, that I can't remember. But uh, right now, what do you think? Do you really think it could just take a slow descent for a long period of time? Yeah, this is the Alzheimer's market. It's, it's the long goodbye for real estate. So um, anybody that's getting into real estate as an investment now, um, I, I, uh, I beg you not to lock your money up in a non-liquid asset. So it's, uh, it has hit its peak in my lifetime, and I expect to live at least 20 more years if God, God is provident to me. So I just don't think that's a good investment whatsoever. We, we, we're well supplied in, in, in real estate in the country, and baby boomers are starting to, to let go of the mortal coil here. And who's going to buy these homes? You know, um, I have a home that my daughter would never be able to afford to buy at the current prices. And she already makes good money. So, um, I don't, so who's buying these homes? So I fully expect that my home here in Laguna Niguel, California, where everybody and their brother wants to live in my home, is gonna go down in price, at least nominally, in real terms, over the next uh, uh, 20 years. So, you know, if, if you look at it, and we get this long inflation, your house may just sit at the same price for the longest time. But now, is that the type of thing that people, hey, you know, my wife, because I get letters from people, hey, my wife and I are arguing, should we buy a house, should we not? And I tell them, don't right now, just wait, because there's deals out there. And everything I've looked at over the course of the last three months has gone down in price. Every area has gone down in price, everything. And now, yes, yeah, some of these houses get sold, and yes, some, you know, people have paid above ask and things like that. But this is crazy right now. It really is. Yeah, you can't look at neighborhoods. It's, and we still live in a bit of a bubble here. I, I would tell people, don't buy in front of a recession, buy after a recession, because we're, we're going in. We're technically in one now, if, depending on how you like to count it. Uh, the government doesn't count it that way, but we're going to be in a recession probably through middle of 2025. The thing I've been wanting everybody for two years, but okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, okay. Patience, my friend. Everybody gets upset when I talk over you, but I always get excited when you're here. Okay, let's put it that way. So you guys can save that one for a rainy day. Just keep yelling at them. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I, um, as far as trading, is, is there sectors that you like right now? I mean, I know you like, uh, you, you like nuclear, you like uranium. Uh, is there anything else that you're really hot on right now? Yeah, look, I never left my long energy position. I was long energy, short tech during this um, three-week sell-off that we had. Uh, energy is going to remain bid. There's not enough of it. Uh, volatility in the Middle East is, and Russia are going to make sure. We're going into what's called resource wars. So uh, uh, you have countries now that are, are stopping the exporting of their product. Mm -hmm. That's why I love uranium. Uh, it's, it's in short supply. And uh, uh, I love coal. And uh, I love propane, I love natural gas. Natural gas will outperform oil here in the next six months, so. Really? Yeah, and uh, if you noticed, uh, one of my family's biggest position, and we own a lot of it, is ExxonMobil, and they just became the largest uh, a holder of, of fossil fuel assets in the United States through their purchase of Pioneer really? this week. Yeah, and, okay. uh, and that's shale. So whenever people talk about shale, oh, shale's over, dun, dun, dun. ExxonMobil's not stupid. They, they know how to grab that oil out of the ground and the gas out of the ground. And so ExxonMobil is a great one. And an oxy, oh, Occidental Petroleum, may get sucked up by uh, Chevron here in the next couple is that months. OXY? Is OXY. That OXY. So keep an eye on that one. The second tier oil companies are probably going to get all scarfed up here. Oil is not going down. Um, it's, well, this is seasonally weak right now for it. So, um, but 
middle of November through February. I expect oil through Christmas, through New Year, is going to start ramping up again, probably over 117 a barrel through the next peak. Hey, kids, I'm getting you oil for Christmas, okay? So, uh, okay, so oil is going to go. So do you see, what do you think, okay, per barrel price of oil? What do you think at? Do you think it's going to go well over 100? Yes. Yeah. We have, we have a, the way oil works, oil works in these big rectangular price ranges. And since we uh, broke back into this new range again, higher, is that uh, as long as it doesn't break back below uh, $80, $81 here on a weekly basis, it's going to go to 117 next. Wow. So, wow. And that could be early spring, or if something crazy happens in the Middle East, it could be tomorrow. Do you, do you, do you like the uh, ETFs for, um, for oil, gas, you know, natural resources like that? You know? yeah, I like to buy the biggest player for myself personally. Like I own uh, EQT, which is the largest natural gas producer in the United States before ExxonMobil just became it. We own ExxonMobil. We own Oxy as a family. We own Canadian Natural Resources as a family. We own BTU, uh, which is the coal company, and uh, we own Suburban Propane. Um, there's some shippers that we love. There's there's uh, an absolute shortage right now of uh, of uh, natural and liquefied natural gas going into Europe for the winter. So FLNG is hot, and uh, and then we have GSL, and there's another one called Torm T R M D, which is an awesome company. Pays almost 20% dividend yield, and it's growing which is my next question, okay? So many people write me and say, Dan, have Bob talk about more dividend stocks and things like that. You love the utilities, right? No, um, I hate the utilities. I love energy dividend companies. Energy dividend companies. Thank you, okay? So energy dividend companies, um, does Exxon have a, a dividend? Pay 4.3%. Oh, wow, okay. So, yeah, dollar, uh, 90, like 93 cents. Uh, they'll, they'll probably raise it now that their, their um, acquisition is done. Wow. But uh, we just keep building a position in it, um, and uh, a DMLP is a great one that has a great dividend. And uh, and then I just bought another one. I just can't remember off the top of my head from my daughter. Oh, FLNG. I just talked about it. Okay. So I just stuck that in her account. Eleven percent dividend yield, and uh, uh, and then you know you want to own um, as many U.S. based resources as you can because I think people are going to be shutting their doors, you know, protecting their assets. So. Anything United States, anything English-speaking world you can own. If it's not in the English-speaking world, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy a company that is trying to extract assets out of the country because Nigeria and Niger have just both locked down their exports. Okay. And I expect to see Russia lock down their exports. What about Canadian uh, mining and things like they're, that? They're just fine. Okay. Canada is not going to screw us with, because they need us too much. Okay. So. Okay. Mm. Wow. Um, God, yeah, my head spinning. Okay. Um, as far as the, uh, you know, the utility you're not into, okay, what about the banking stocks right now? What do you feel about the banking stock? All these, you know, Kevin O'Leary and all these other people are talking about how the uh, mid-sized banks are having problems right yeah, now. Yeah, they all are, even the big banks. Bank of America is technically bankrupt. So it's just, uh, if, 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 if it, that's why interest rates aren't going to go any higher. If interest rates push up higher, the cost to insure their their debt goes up. It, it becomes what's called an infinite bet, meaning that it's it's uninsurable. Okay. And if it's uninsurable, then they have all kinds of problems internally, and they have to start reducing risk rapidly. And a bank reducing risk means that they're um, they're not lending money, and then they go into a uh, into a par dive. So. Okay. Let's talk about what you do. You run Trade Genius, and you run a professional trading platform for how many years has it been now? Gosh, eight years. Eight years. And uh, one thing you set up for me last month, which was awesome, was danlovestrading.com to get discounts from you guys. And you said, oh, I left those up for you, Dan. So uh, take a look at danlovestrading.com to get access to Bob's uh, trade and get access to Bob. But please tell them about Trade Genius. Yeah, and, and before I do, too, if you, if you accidentally go, go through Dan, let, let um, my sales guy, um, Matt, know that you came through Dan so you get the discount. Okay, so... Uh, you know, we, we have high integrity here. So if you tell them, hey, I went through, oh, I forgot to go through Dan, but I came directly to you guys, just tell me you came through Dan and we'll give you, we honor the, the price we give Dan. So, 
Yeah, so we've created a, s a number of very effective algorithms in the market. And so we can look, I was telling Dan, we can look behind the scenes here. So we knew on Friday that something was going to happen with, with uh, the world because people started dark pooling, buying energy stocks. And, uh, and our alarm bells went up. I told people on Friday, hey, buy oil. I think something might be up here. And um, it's because I didn't know what would be up, but I know somebody knows something's up. Remember 9-11? Yeah. And so we have these algorithms. We have the ability to look at what's called volume events. We look at momentum events. And then we've created a number of services around that. So mm -hmm. uh, seven bundles, you can pick and choose. You want to trade stocks. You want to trade um, crypto. You want to trade options or futures with us. You just check those out. Or you go to Dan's site if you want to get additional discount. We did a basic and an advanced um, uh, opportunity for you. And it's good till Saturday. So take advantage of Dan's stuff is always good as long as you go through Dan's site. Yeah. But uh, go through Saturday to get the best deals and you go to tradelikeagegis.com. And if you don't like any of the bundles, you just want to buy something separately and uh, and you, you don't use Dan's site, just make sure you come through Dan and so we can give you a good discount on uh, anything non-bundled. Okay. And All that's right. it. So you'll love the prices. Well, you know, first one or two trades you make with us, you pay for the whole year. So. I get so busy, you know, with, we all do. And, uh, and I, I, I want to thank you also for coming out here today because I know you're going on vacation. And uh, again, Mrs. Kudlis waiting to walk. <laughs> so uh, thank she, you, though. She, she made me shave and put on a nice shirt. We're, we're heading out of here. Go. Dan, Dan <laughs> shanghaied me. I said, I got to go see Dan before I go. <laughs> okay. Uh, but okay. So let's see. So banking, you know, uh, so Banking is kind of a, do uh, you think you're going to see uh, mergers? you think you're going to see some of these banks join uh, forces? Do you think that, uh, do you think we're going to see any more bank closures right now anytime soon? Yes, to everything. So it's going to be a lot of shotgun marriages in banking. They're just going to merge all these smaller players into bigger players. We're going to probably go from 1,500 banks to probably 500 banks when this is all over in the country. Wow. So, um the big, big banks are just going to be, whatever money they need, they're just going to shove money into these banks. So... Uh, but we're definitely going into recession, so don't buy banks. And uh, the safest trade is going to be uh, the way I'm positioned personally, long energy, I'm long bonds, and then either um, neutral or um, I'm short the market. So wow. that's how I'm playing it, and it's been a very good year for us. Michael Burry's been uh, getting a lot of press because he was the man uh, played by Christian Bale in The Big Short where he bet against the housing market. He's bet against the S&P 500, and he's done very well on that trade, similar to what you've done. Do you think that there's still more room for it to go down? And, yeah. you know, nothing goes yeah. up in a straight line, nothing goes down in a straight line. People, you know, the, the problem with, you know, stocks like GameStop and like that movie, Dumb Money is fantastic if you haven't seen it yet, Bob. You'd love it because it was just a few years, ago, a couple of years ago, and how these kids you know, uh, bet against the, you know, uh, GameStop and the short squeeze that they put these guys through was absolutely amazing. But you just got to learn to sell to it at certain times and, and yeah. take a profit and get out. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we were watching that. Um, yeah. So here's 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 our, our blueprint subject to uh, any unforeseen events. So the way the market works is it's called an iceberg market. So what you see in the stock market is this much and it's down here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it, what happens in the market is happening in what's called the derivative markets. And so people tell me all the time, goes, oh, we had bad news. Why didn't it go down? He said, because it didn't go down as much as people bet on protection. And so once that is a known event, people with protection want to close their protection. When you close your protection, it makes the market automatically go up because it's leveraged. And so you have these pools that are out there that are way, way deeper than mom and pop whipping around on the on the on Charles Schwab. So the way it's looking right now is that we um, will put a, put a high in October 13, 16. The uh, rest of October should be fairly negative, maybe into the first week in November. And then actually, um, you know, Santa Claus kicks in because there's a lot of what's called flow going into that, that January next year option. So I expect to see a basically an all clear screaming from CNBC into January. And then after the January event, all hell breaks loose in the uh, market and the economy. That's how we're looking all at it right now. All hell breaks loose up or all hell breaks loose going down? Down. Okay. Yeah, so, but you're gonna get a Santa rally here where everybody's gonna be mocking people who thought oh. that the market's gonna collapse. I and love that you said that because I've had 
four people in particular that have written me and said, this guy's an idiot. There's going to be Santa's dad. Santa's not coming this year. You know, they've sent me pictures of Santa with this stuck in the chimney and all these different well, things. Well, there's a so. difference between Santa coming to your house and Santa coming to Wall Street. Okay. okay? That Santa might be dead, but I'm happy to bet against you if you want to bet Santa Rally's dead. Oh, I love it. Okay. What else? Okay. Um, mergers. Do you think we're going to see more uh, grocery stores and banks and uh, other industries? Builders. Think you're going to see home builders that are going to merge that w were you know adversaries a few years ago out of survival. They'll have to get together. You're going to see mer when 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 growth stops, and you know uh, executive teams are charged with growth. They're going to go and use their balance sheet to try to buy out rivals if they get synergy. Like Exxon Mobil while Pioneer, they said they're going to $30 billion they paid for the company. They're going to, they're going to extract $2 billion of savings a year for the next, next uh, 15 years. So wow. that, that's what they're going to do. Um, but home builders are different. They're only going to buy home builders if they're sitting on a lot of land that's not been um, uh, processed yet. Other than that, you, 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 know, you don't want to buy. And the other ones have staying power. You can buy land and sit on it for 10 years. But well, the problem with this, some of these guys didn't buy land to sit on it. These guys bought land and started building on it, and they're one quarter done right now. And you've seen, you know, you've seen these dormitory condos that are just prisons that look awful, that are these square boxes that are five and six floors that uh, they're building all over the place. And that, that's the thing. I thought that this was a California thing, and then people are sending me Iowa and and the south and georgia and all these different places that are building those things yeah that's and different than the home builders those home builders are, those guys are all going to get paid because it's pension money that paid for those buildings okay so the people are going to get burned is if you're in real estate funds i'd get out of them okay because they're illiquid and uh, and if you don't believe me my mother-in-law was in a fund that took her 15 years to get out of it was a one-year fund took her 15 years to get out of it. they gated her for 15 years until they can get out of it whole and that's what they're going to do to you. And so I wouldn't ever, ever be in a real estate fund. If you want real estate, buy it yourself. Okay. Wow. Don't, do uh, you have 15 years to wait for your money? No, you don't. And, and uh, it's, it's, that's why I don't like real estate so much. Um, we own some. Uh, I, don't, I don't like it, but I'm married and my wife likes it. So, uh, so we have some. But I'd rather just be, look, if I'm worried about the stock market tomorrow, I can go to cash. Go on vacation, not worry about anything. If I'm in a home, you're hearing all these horror stories now about uh, people just sitting there squatting, they're not paying their rent, and uh, and now you're stuck. You know, you have to still pay the mortgage even though somebody's squatting on and you for months. And the expenses and the insurance and everything, as I just talked over Bob. So, yeah, that's you know, okay. It, it uh, it's just it's awful. So, um, okay, so DanLovesTrading.com. Don't take a look at that. And uh, okay, you know what else? So so. Uh, should we be concerned about the Middle East right now and, you know, the stock market right now? Is that a concern or is it not a concern? Is it still smooth sailing until something happens? No, I, I think we're going to get a rough patch. Earnings aren't going to be that great. I think then the, they're going to come in with these flows and they're going to try to lift it. And then 2024 will be pretty much an awful year to be in the stock market. So, but look, the Middle East, is, it's, it's unknowable. I mean, uh, just so people know, I was in the Marine Corps um, when our barracks got blown up by Hezbollah. So uh, these people, you know, uh, there's a difference between Sunni and Shia Muslims. Okay, the Sunni Muslims don't aren't aren't waiting to herald in the 12th Mahdi. So Shia Muslims believe in the, the ushering the 12th Mahdi, and they want to help bring that about through. You don't care. You can't threaten them with death. Death is glory. Death is. And you say, hey, you can nuke the world. You know, you could probably talk Saudi Arabia about nuking the world because they want to have their nice house. You talk about people who want to bring the 12th Mahdi, and they don't care about nuking the world. That's why Iran is so unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So you have, a, you have a, an environment now where people with means, technology, motivation, okay, and religious conviction to, um, to, to herald in something that's really awful for everybody else. So it's unknowable, and right now we're we're that's why we parked two aircraft carriers off the the mm -hmm. coast uh, of Lebanon, and uh, you know to intimidate um, you know the players in that market and and, uh, and that economy to keep from doing something that that could really cause World War III to break out, and it still may break out. So yeah, I mean, look, t we could be talking today, and tomorrow we can have a dirty bomb going off in New York, and the market's down forty percent. Okay. So. 
you, we're, we're that volatile right now. That's why you got to be really, really, really careful. I'm in energy because energy likes likes fear, you know, uh, but the rest of the market does not. Okay. Um, final thing. I love metals. Love gold. I love silver. You know, um, what do you think about metals? Gold, silver, platinum, palladium. What do you think about everything? They love pauses in, in the Fed. So uh, I've been adding to my position since we talked last. <clears throat> it's gone down since we talked last. Yeah, it's, but, been a, it's been a basically, a, I think it's on sale, but that's Dan's way of putting it. Yeah, look, it's consolidating on high, <clears throat> meaning it didn't, it didn't, when markets sell off, it, you know, you're looking for if it can maintain the, the top third of its move, mm -hmm. it's holding. Silver, gold, the miners have held up wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, when the Fed pauses, and then when the Fed cuts, um, that's gold, silver, Bitcoin time. Okay. So if you like it, you know, buy them and uh, and just uh, work your way into a nice position. That's what I'm doing, and uh, I think it'll be uh, you'll you'll be happy when they when they bring interest rates back down to zero here in the next two years. Okay. Do you? Let's. We'll end it with uh, cryptocurrency. I've been getting. I mean, you guys. I own this much cryptocurrency out there. Um, do you think that Bitcoin and these altcoins and things like that are going to be dramatically affected in the near future. Yeah, and look, um, Bitcoin will be affected by a recession. So we're expecting some pressure downward on Bitcoin. It has these occasional pops like it did two weeks ago. We're expecting another pop, maybe a thousand, two thousand dollars. But uh, when the market really sells off, we can see Bitcoin back under 20K. Stay away from the altcoins. It's, it's winter for them. And then once that Bitcoin bottom is put in, then I think people are going to see a 5X move higher in Bitcoin. Wow. And then if you own the Bitcoin miners, they're going to run at probably 25X from their lows. Okay, so 5X, you could see $100,000 Bitcoin is what you're saying? Yeah, from the bottom, sure. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, okay. Guys, take a look at uh, danlovestrading.com. Thank you so much for coming out here. And uh, I'll thank your wife when I see her uh, for, for letting me steal you away. But uh, I, I always appreciate your expertise and I know how busy you are. And the cool thing about if you guys sign up with him, he's got ways that uh, when you're in his uh, platform that you can communicate directly with Bob. And I've seen guys for, use his platform and have very little money involved. And then they make so much money a week by trading. And uh, it's a great place to, uh, um, to learn and also it's a great place to invest and put your money into. Yeah, and we're not guru based. So we have indicators that literally you look at it, you know whether I should be buying or selling or holding a stock. So we, we try to demystify things for you. And then also, too, you know, every day we put a podcast out. It's free on YouTube. Now take a look at that, uh, Trade yeah. Genius. You'll uh, like it. It is. It's fantastic. So please don't forget to the like button. Don't forget, if you want to get a hold of me, email me at hello at iallegedly.com. That's the only email that uh, address is being answered to right now. And uh, onward and upward, guys. I'll see you very soon. And, and thank you very much. You have a great vacation. Thank Plus, you. Bob's going on JSX too on his trip, too. So it's yeah, very exciting. It's first trip exciting. on first trip on JSX. So, anyways, guys, uh, uh, thank you very much for being here. And we'll try to get Bob back again soon.